Hey, I'm Jason Chapman, and I run a music store with my brothers, John and Jeremy. People are always asking, what is it like to be in a family business? Well, I've been in a band with my family for the last 28 years. And if that wasn't enough, we recently opened a music shop. Since opening the shop, we found that the people that come through the door are just about as unique as the instruments they carry. And now, since they gave us a TV show, we leave the cameras running, and there's always something going on at the shop. of the Ozark Music Shop. We are back with more music, more entertainment, and, and explosions. this is right here. We have explosions this episode. Wow. Explosions. Huh. I wrote back here? That's cool. Anyway, we got a band hey, in put here. put that label across my face. Can you do an explosion right here? No. <laughs> <laughs> Only if it would permanently explode your face. I, I hope you do that. <laughs> That he just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, who do we have on this episode? We have a great group called Isabel Crane. But Jeremy's been playing in this group with uh, with Liz, who's also been on our uh, show quite a bit. And yeah, part of the shop. Her. She's a star of the shop. Yes. She really people is. come to see her. That's right. <laughs> and an amazing singer. And that whole band's full of amazing musicians, uh, except the mandolin player. So I'm, I'm just kind of okay. holding on. on. <laughs> <laughs> But it is, a, it is a fun group uh, called Isabel Crane, and uh, the music's different. I'm not even sure how to classify it, but it is acoustic music, so it kind of fits into our Ozark Music Shop scene. I classify it as good. Thank you. There you go. I'll take that. Like that? <laughs> we'll just say, I it was good. Isabel Crane, making good music. I like that. So we also have a segment, uh, another one of our Shop Talk segments. Yes. We're going to talk about friends and what they do. What are those? Well, I don't know, but you Is that what happens when you're very scared? Same joke. We did, poorly. Though. Poorly. Wow, you guys should prepare in the same room, not separate rooms. <laughs> oh. But, but it is talking about how to maintain your instruments. Yes. So we, yes, uh, we like those segments. Frets are very important. How would you know you play a bass? <laughs> Fretless. <laughs> you didn't get it. Because I don't worry. <laughs> you don't worry about being in tune. <laughs> See, that's how you do the fret joke. Right? <laughs> anyway, we hope you enjoy the show. i 
So how did the band form it? I guess start with you two were both taking guitar lessons from the same classical teacher. Tia Becker, actually. Mm -hmm. A Reed's Spring vocal. Reed's Spring. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in the wrong place. Wait, it's Reed. The spring belongs nope. to Reed. It's Reed. Reed's Spring, that's what Reed's. I said. Reed's. That's yeah. what she said. Yeah, okay. yeah. Sheesh. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad we got that out of the way. But. <laughs> Yeah, and I was actually playing with Mike already. I didn't know that. And, and Carney and Gwen with Adam Carney mm -hmm. of the no same relation name but not related. To me. But even before that, BJ and Matt were in a band together. I want to see video of this. Mudstrip. Do we have any video? We, we had have an some. amazing band. Do you have video? It's pretty raw. No, it was before video. <laughs> but anyway, you guys got together. Uh, we were going to play classical instrumental music. And then I uh, asked her if she could sing, and she said, yeah. <laughs> and uh, she was good at singing. And then uh, that's it. And he said, we should form a band together. The best yeah. part was when I met Matt, we were at my house on New Street, and my air conditioning was out because it was always out. And we, um, all of my music gear was in the attic, and it was so hot. I would say probably like 90 degrees. 100 and I'm impervious to the heat, but Matt's not. Matt likes and, to sweat. Yeah. The main thing that I remember from my first meeting with Matt was just sweat pouring off of his face. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, he was just like, Jeez, it's hot! <laughs> it started playing again. It's miserable. <clears throat> Three, two, one. This all started with a passion. Uh, music has been a part of our lives for as long as I can remember. Our goal from the start was to have an outlet where we could feel that passion in others. At the Acoustic Shop, this is not just what we do, it's who we are. Hey folks, this is John again for another episode of Shop Talk. Today we're going to talk all about frets.
Now the frets on your guitar or your banjo, your mandolin, any of the fretted instruments, what that is are these metal bars that are going across here. And what they help us do is when we press our finger behind them, they're cutting off the string at a shorter length in order to give us that new note. Um, the deal with frets is that they're made of a softish metal uh, that's actually a nickel silver compound. Uh, so it has nickel and silver in it. But what ends up happening is you start to build these grooves and I don't know if you're gonna see them right away, but they cut into there. The problem with that is now when I press down my finger, it's pushed to the front end of that groove. Unlike the original crown that was created by the fret originally, it was topped and round. The center of it is where it's in tune. So as I put these grooves in there, it pushes that forward so that my notes start to go a little bit sharp. The other thing it's gonna do is not make a solid connection. When you press down, it's not as solid as that crown fret. It's gonna be just a little bit you know, softer connection to that fret material, making duller sounding notes, and as well as not being in tune. So what, they're, what we do with those is a couple different options. You can have what's, what's known as a fret dress, where they go back through there and they're gonna level all those frets off with a, with a straight plane file till they get rid of all those grooves. Then they take this tool right here, which is called a crowning file. The inside of this is crowned, just like the top of that file should be, and they go back through and build a perfect crown on top of these frets. After they do that, they'll polish and level those out and clean them up, and you'll have like brand new frets. Again, they'll be a little bit shorter than they were before, meaning a new setup, but it will be almost like starting all brand new again. Now, you can usually do that one, two, maybe even three times uh, before you run out of material, and then it's just not gonna be enough fret material to continue that going. Then you have to do what a lot of us do, is then do a complete refret. Now that means that they're going to take all the frets out of the guitar, they're going to then plane it and start all over again with fresh brand new frets. Now I personally love a new fret job. In fact, when we were out on the road a lot, I probably had this done every year and a half or so um, because it wear into them pretty darn quick. So having a perfectly level straight again guitar, nothing like it. Plays easier, sounds better, does a whole lot better. Now there are options and I have actually recently done this on some of my guitars for a harder material. Um, stainless steel has been coming out and become a very, very strong uh, material for a lot of people to use. It is almost indestructible, very, very strong. You won't see near as much wear as what you will out of the nickel silver. The complaint I've heard on some of those is that that material is so hard, it kind of creates a brighter sound, not quite the same as what the original nickel silver material uh, sounded like. Another option, which I personally have been using, is a material called Evo. Uh, that material it looks kind of gold or brass colored, but it ha it's a little softer than uh, stainless, but wears very similar to stainless. So you kind of get l more of the tone of the nickel silver with an extremely durable uh, fret wire. Either way, this is a normal maintenance kind of thing. You will see this if you're playing your guitar a lot, expect every year and a half or so to probably at least need a dress, if not need a new refret. So be looking for that. If you see these grooves start to build in there, start getting onto it. That way you can make sure that your guitar is in top shape. So this has been another episode of Shop Talk. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. We learned a little bit more about frets and how they work and great ways to make sure you maintain them. And until next time, guys, keep on picking. If you're looking for an acoustic instrument, the Acoustic Shop is the place you want to go. The Acoustic Shop, uh, we've been open about four years now and uh, have been nominated top 100 uh, dealer at NAMM show uh, for two years now. At the Acoustic Shop, we mainly focus on acoustic music instruments and the accessories that go with them. Guitars, mandolins, banjos, basses, and accessories and the, the lessons and repairs that go along with those. Uh, something that we've been passionate about for the last uh, 28 years of our lives, playing in a family band growing up, then we opened a all-acoustic music store in uh, Missouri to help fill the needs of people that are more focused on just that niche of the genre. With us having all those years on the road, it's really helped us to find the right instrument 
for the right person. When somebody calls us or comes into the shop, we can actually talk to them and know exactly what kind of instrument would be the best fit for them. And I think that's just something that we bring that a lot of people can. Started out teaching lessons before we even opened the shop, so that is something that has been a passion of ours for the last 15 years. I believe we've said this is where the pros teach, and I truly believe this is where the pros teach. At the Acoustic Shop, this isn't just what we do, this is who we are. So if you're wanting to learn how to play the banjo, the fiddle, the mandolin, guitar, the Acoustic Shop's the place for you. People probably recognize Mike from uh, Big Smith, and before that, he's just been kind of like the bass man around town, but also you started out on horn, didn't you? School? When I was a little kid, I, yeah, I played brass instruments when I was younger. I still do. Yeah, he still plays with us sometimes. Have, so if you need a trumpet player or a trombone player or a tuba player or anything like that, <laughs> you can put a phone number right here. Yeah. It'll come across the street. Yeah. And now you're playing in Branson, right, too? I am. I'm playing in a 60 show. Playing electric bass in a 60 show in Branson. And he's got a fan that just blows Groovy. his glorious hair. Number the one time. hits of the 60s. <laughs> I had to play yeah. Cooper Theater. <laughs> I like the story about we were really nervous at a wedding one time, and we were standing in the corner afraid to, to ask for food or anything. And then Mike comes strolling by with his sunglasses on, popping grapes. <laughs> he looked at us all from across the room, and there was a full crowd of people, and Mike looked at us and went, <laughs> and was dropping fruit in his mouth. <laughs> really, really fancy wedding. <laughs> oh, so we got to break the ice. Yeah. So he's got to be the first guy. That's that's why Mike's here. <laughs> yeah. And then I guess I, I kind of joined. You guys had a fiddle player that was playing with you for a while, and I got a call to fill in once. Yeah. I showed up. I didn't know any of the songs, <laughs> and nobody spoke to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was just over there on my own trying to, like, follow along with Was that it? I thought it was... You look like you knew. All right. right. We and really, then we found we out he was married. I wasn't also married with yet. A, well, yeah, but then later... You didn't invite us married. to your wedding? No, and... Nope. He he was having his first kid, and we didn't even know it until like, we boom, saw Sheila for boom. the first time, and she was super pregnant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, like, you're married? To, to clarify here, the first maybe three or four months, I didn't even know anybody's name in the band. <laughs> I would show up, and everyone would just kind of like, hey, man, how's it going? And I'd say, hi, guys. We just thought and you were I think I called you Jacob music. for quite a while. <laughs> uh, it's been fun. Music's changed a little bit. It's not quite as much... Uh, Gypsy Jazz, a lot more original material from Matt and Liz um, that's kind of steered the band a little bit away from the, the Paris Jazz sound, but I'm, I'm liking it. Maybe, maybe that's partly the mandolin getting in the, the groove oh, didn't really fit as well. It's a lot of that, which I like. Oh, yeah. I really like not playing just strictly like jazz tunes. So then once the mandolin came, it was really encouraging for us to just completely make our own sound. We still don't know what to call it. It's some kind of Ozark something. Yeah, it's Americana something. angst. Yes. Angst music. Yeah. This is uh, Americana Ozark angst. angst. <laughs> <laughs>
So that was another episode of the Ozark Music Shop. It was. Uh, featuring Isabel Crane. That's me. No, well, it is not you. You are part, part of. We are all Isabel Crane. Oh, cool. We are Isabel. The collective. <laughs> we are the collective. Anyway. <laughs> it was I, great music. Yeah. I really liked it a whole bunch. I, I did enjoy finding out all the information about Mike. That was uh, the guy who, so mysterious. It's always the quiet He one. views the future so brightly that he always wears shades. True. That's, that's not a the positive outlook. That Even is in not the, the dark. Lyric. He's like, he's in pitch His dark. future is so bright. That's why he, he views the sunglasses. future. <laughs> no, you messed up too. I did not. <laughs> Let's anyway. listen to the song. <laughs> it, it's the same outcome either way. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Mike's the coolest. It's always the cool. Can we go, can we rank it? Bass player. Mike, then me probably. No, I it definitely. pretty much runs the same as our band. Yeah. It's the bass player. Me. No. The banjo player, which would technically be Matt. <laughs> I don't think that's <laughs> Matt. John would be Liz. And Jeremy, you're Jeremy. BJ. Where do, where do we put drummers? Drums? are always at the <laughs> Always at the bottom. Anyway. Anyway. That was a fun episode. It though, was a lot of fun. We would like to invite you guys again to visit our YouTube page where you can check out past episodes. You can check out our Facebook. You can check out our we are social media crazy, guys. We mm. have it all. We're social bl butterflies. Really? No. Yes. Probably not. I am. But anyway, we loved having you with us, and thanks again for watching. We will see you guys next time. Closed captioning and other considerations provided by... 